I'm Angela Piccini and I'm a lecturer in the film and television department at the University of Bristol. And I wanted to thank uh, Victoria Bates in the history department and Watershed and the Royal Anthropological Institute Film Festival for inviting me to introduce you to tonight's screening. Um, Salt of the Earth is a collaboration between Vim Vendors and Giuliano Ribeiro Salgado, who's the son of photographic collaborators Sebastião and Lelia Salgado. The film is a chronologically organized, um, episodic take on the Salgado's lives, told primarily via Sebastião's journey from being a trained economist with the World Bank to his beautiful black and white photographs detailing the lives of the tribal, of the oppressed, of workers and of the exiled. Like Werner Herzog, Wim Wenders continues to shift fluidly between narrative fiction and documentary. But within those shifts are continuing interests. Films like Paris, Texas and Wings of Desire and documentaries such as Buena Vista Social Club and Pina are linked via love of music, especially the locating of music in the land and in the body. And also they're linked with a fascination with collaboration. Ry Cooder famously composed the music for Paris, Texas and collaborated with vendors on Buena Vista Social Club. Um, and Pina and Buena Vista Social Club explore the magic and the chemistry of creative collaboration and the tensions held across the individual actors working within groups. Wings of Desire, a f which is a city symphony for Berlin, explores individual alienation where the experience of alienation is utterly shaped by the individual's immersion in the urban multitude. The choreographer needs her dance theater, the trapeze artist needs her circus, the singer needs the band. Vender's films are marked too by his interest in new film technologies and in finding new ways to work with cinematographic traditions. The long takes in Paris, Texas that follow Harry Dean Stanton on his journey of redemption rework something of the lone Western hero his personal struggle, struggle figured in the landscape. Wings of Desire turns to black and white film conventions of Hollywood and calls up in the transition from black and white to color the Wizard of Oz in so far as the human world is black and white and the angelic is figured in color. In Pina, Vendor's experiments with 3D, bringing alive Pina Bausch archival footage by placing it into constructed cinematic settings, playing with scale and intimacy, but also mixing colors and foregrounding the soundtrack. So, Salt of the Earth takes place within this cinematic history. It's characterized by a conversation between black and white and color imagery, with formal innovation, and a celebration of sound and music. The film is first shaped by Vender's use of a deceptively simple technique. He dissolves between, between Salgado's tightly framed face in black and white, his reflected face in the glass onto which his photographs are projected and that has the effect almost of a light box and then the photographs also stand alone as images in themselves. This does more than locate the meaning of the images in Salgado's bi biography. It makes manifest the interrelationship between the artist and his subjects but it also brings the images to life. Salgado enacts the photographs through his beautifully lit face and his voice he returns dignity and specificity to the people in these photographs who over the course of time have lost some of their individuality through over-circulation. Where these images have become journalistic icons, Salgado returns them to events. The disenfranchised multitude become individual agents with desires, dreams, humanity. Vendors uses color to effect too. We see it first as Vender's voiceover switches from a descriptive tone to a personal and intimate one, at the same time as we move from black and white to color. Vender's describes Salgado as the only boy among seven sisters and exclaims, what a life. Vender's then says that's where he grew up and that's where you are now and that's where we, a little documentary crew, are set up. So subject, crew and audience are all deftly positioned as a sort of imagined community. The tonal informality and direct address to the viewer is matched uh, by the contemporary convention of color at this point in the film as being read as immediate and impressionistic. Similarly, uh, conversations about cinematic technique connect Salgado's photographic and Vender's film practices. 
Salgado says at one point that when you take a photo, the shot is not yours alone. The person offers it to you. He also says that the photographic image presents truth in a fraction of a second, which echoes Jean-Luc Godard's famous line from 1963's Le Petit Soldat, that truth happens at 24 frames a second. Later, Venders makes reference to the jump cut, that other staple of the European avant-garde, but in Salt of the Earth, it introduces the arrival of Sebastião's son, Giuliano, whose idea of this film about his father it had originally been. Which kind of brings me to the question of collaboration in this film. And I don't know in these sorts of introductions, normally they're sort of celebrations of filmmakers, but I'm hoping to introduce something of a more, well, at least to invite you to take a more critical stance also. So here, collaboration takes place across multiple scales and entanglements. The one collaboration that pulses throughout the film is that of Sebastiao and his wife, Lelia, although she remains strangely absent other than through photographs and a few later glimpses. But it was she who bought Sebastiao the first, his first film camera. It was she who encouraged him to quit his well-paying job at the World Bank to follow his dream. It was she who raised their children single-handedly while he traveled the world, and she who profoundly shaped the projects and books that emerged out of them. And yet we don't hear her speak until quite late on in the film. And she's never really positioned as an equal co-creator of the work, but rather as a woman who's made sacrifices so that her husband could succeed. I do feel that this is kind of a problem in the film, and had hoped to find a more nuanced take on this heroic male. I was left rather wondering about Lelia's absence from a story that is as clearly as much hers as it is his. <coughs> However, arguably, this is a similar problematic relationship that Salgado has with all of his photographic subjects. They are all collaborators. They are there but without voice, other than the one that Salgado gives to them. Now, while I don't believe that Venders is consciously troubling uh, what might be read as Salgado's somewhat romantic objectification of women and of global struggle, this is certainly something that you might want to think with as you watch the film. And what about Giuliano, the son? We learn of his love for his father, his distance from him while growing up, his hero worship, his desire to be the one who made the film, only to be supplanted in some way by yet another father figure of image making, Venders himself. While this film could be read as a thwarted attempt to reconcile father and son, for the son to gain respect on his own terms for his own photographic practice, this doesn't really find a strong narrative thread in the film. Venders wisely, perhaps, doesn't dwell in that space. Instead, we see a very moving sequence in which Giuliano and Sebastiao move from the deserts and jungles that are normally the focus of Salgado's practice to film walruses in the Arctic. We see extraordinary choreographies of father and son arm crawling through a shingle or arm crawling along a shingle beach and then rolling along the pebbles, cameras held aloft, always shooting towards the walruses in order to disturb them while trying to get the best shot. There's obviously lots to say about this film, but you need to watch it. I could have gone into a lot more detail about Salgado's work on the Ethiopian famine, on his archaeologies of the industrial era that steadfastly re refused the term ruin porn, to his work on the global outcast, to his documentation of the conflicts in the former Yugoslavia, but I'll allow the film to speak for itself. So while I was left wanting to take issue with what I feel to be a somewhat sentimentally indulgent tone to the film, and a shared colonial, if heroic, attitude to the people with whom Salgado's working. And while I remain slightly uncomfortable with the positioning of Lelia as beautiful muse and stalwart keeper of the home fires, ultimately, actually, this film is a film about hope. And that's where I've been told I must not give a spoiler um, in this talk, but I'll say that. But beginning with suffering, exploitation, and genocide, Sebastio Salgado and his family collaborators come to the realization that rather than document, rather than represent, it's actually their duty to act in the world, to generate new possible futures. Um, and they do that using the profits of their previous recording of past domination. So although I won't spoil the narrative twists, after the social comes a turn to the more than human, to the entangled things and networks that are part of what makes human life on Earth possible. And so the film ends with an extended elegy to this more than human world. It's a love letter to the planet for all its tragedies, crimes, and violent acts. 
There is certainly a whiff of the romantic, the originary and the primal as the language of the film moves from French for most of it through to Portuguese at the end. But then the geopolitical human events that the Salgado family has documented over the past 45 years and that Venders has collected on screen is, of course, important. Their aesthetic and their narrative power may now be domesticated as historic, but the fact of these events having taken place, of Salgado with the men in the gold mines of Brazil looking nothing less like the line of conquistadors scaling the mountain paths in Werner Herzog's Aguirre the Wrath of God, that's perhaps the thing. As Wenders says right at the beginning of the film, Salgado's practice, like anyone working with film, invol involved the writing and rewriting of the world with light and shadows. Where Salgado perhaps focused initially on the shadows, the film comes to an end with a firm commitment to the light. <laughs>